Hi, I'm Hai Junxia, an assistant professor from Cognitive Science and Design Lab at the University of California, San Diego. Today, I'll be talking about millions and billions of views, understanding popular science and knowledge communication on video sharing platforms. Science communication is the practice of sharing scientific knowledge with the public, raising awareness and interest in scientific domains, facilitating public discussions on important societal issues, as well as influencing people's opinions and behaviors. However, effective science communication is very challenging due to the complexity of scientific methodologies and knowledge, as well as the communication skills required to reach and engage audience of diverse backgrounds. As a result, successful com science communicators are often domain experts who communicate to the public in a very captivating manner or professional information disseminators who have sufficient knowledge about a topic. Carl Sagan, Stephen Hawking, Bill Nye, Ted Chiang are popular science communicators who have used books, TV shows, and lectures to communicate with and impact billions of people around the world. In recent years, new groups of science communicators have arisen on online video sharing platforms to share their understanding of different domains. Some of the most popular science communicators on YouTube have millions or tens of millions of subscribers, as well as millions or billions of accumulated views, demonstrating their capability to reach and influence audience around the world. Their style of communicating knowledge to the public, however, is not only constrained within the scientific domains. Communicators on YouTube are covering a wide range of topics beyond science, including politics, finance, arts, history, and self-development, and other topics. In light of this growing range of topics and group of communicators, in this work, we expand the notion of science communication to science and knowledge communication. And because the diverse styles and topics of the videos, we find it is extremely difficult in practice to give a clear definition of SKC videos. So perhaps this is another case of, I know it when I see it. So let's take a look at some examples. These are shade balls. They're being dumped into this water reservoir in Los Angeles. And contrary to what you may have heard, their main purpose is not to reduce evaporation. So what are they really for? To find out, I'm visiting the largest collection of these balls anywhere on Earth what? at LA Reservoir. Ninety-six million shade balls. That's correct. <laughs> ninety-six million. It's it's very rare for you to see ninety-six million of anything. Yeah. <laughs> this is your life vest, which you are required to wear. All right. Throw a leg over and climb on in any way you can. There you go. Looking at this, I had so many questions. Like, why are they black? Are they safe to have in drinking water? How much do they cost? Do they actually reduce evaporation? And what is their real purpose? Yes. Hello? Yes, this is Jackie speaking. Hi, my name is Tony, and this is Every Frame of Painting. Some filmmakers can do action, others can do comedy. But for 40 years, the master of combining them has been Jackie Chan. These days, there's a lot of movies that combine funny scenes with fight scenes. But even when the movie's good, the comedy and action seem to be two different directors and two different styles. And that's why Jackie's so interesting. In his style, action is comedy. And his work shows that the same filmmaking principles apply, whether you're trying to be funny or kick ass. So let's dive in. If you'd like to see the names of the films as I'm talking, press the CC button below. Ready? Let's go. So, how does Jackie create action that is also funny? First off, he gives himself a disadvantage. No matter what film, Jackie always starts beneath his opponents. He has no shoes, he's handcuffed, he has a bomb in his mouth. From this point, he has to fight his way back to the top. Each action creates a logical reaction. And by following the logic, we get a joke. 
In movies, this comedic style goes back to the silent clowns like Chaplin, Lloyd, and Keaton. But I think Jackie has distilled it down to one line of dialogue. Please! I said I don't want trouble! So even if we can't give them a clear definition, there are some common characteristics of these videos that are worth discussing. First, they are highly engaging visual stories with diverse styles. Some are just talking heads, some have rich motion graphics, or some had use whiteboard animations. Despite their diverse styles, they are highly educational and entertaining. They are often standalone pieces and do not require the viewers to have any background knowledge to be able to understand the content. And for some of the scientific topics, they are often called explainers. And for domains such as films, arts, and politics, they're often called video essays. On the other hand, they are very different from MOOC and how-to videos, which have received a significant amount of attention from the research community. And they do not provide immediate academic, financial, or practical benefits for the viewers. Our research is motivated by the growing impact and reach of this content and the numerous hours we have spent on watching these videos in our personal lives. And while watching these videos, we have many questions. Who is this emerging group of SKC video creators and what motivates them to engage in SKC activities? What practices do these creators employ to reach and engage with millions and billions of viewers? How are SKC videos consumed and perceived by the viewers? And what are the challenges and opportunities in this emerging ecology of SKC on online video sharing platforms? So to answer these questions, we conducted interviews with SKC video creators and viewers. We interviewed 27 SKC video creators whose channel subscribers range from 60,000 to 10 million with 1.5 million to 2.6 billion accumulated views of the channels. The, the topics these creators cover include science, engineering, history, philosophy, film, music, and more. We also interviewed 13 SKC video viewers from different education backgrounds and age groups. Before we dive into the findings, I want to talk about the limitations of our research approach. To recruit creators with sufficient experience, we selected those with more than 10,000 subscribers and two years of experience on YouTube. Therefore, our findings were distilled from a small percentage of SKC creators. Similarly, the viewers we interviewed were frequent viewers of, of SKC videos, and therefore may not fully represent the broad audience of SKC videos. However, a representative sampling of SKC creators and viewers may perhaps be technically or ecologically infeasible. Nevertheless, our interviews with the creators and viewers have shed the first light on the motivations of and the practices employed by these creators, the perception of the viewers, and the challenges encountered in the SKC community. So let's get started with the findings. Our research identified three key motivations of the creators. Creators' intrinsic desire for learning and sharing their learned knowledge. The desire to impact viewers' well-being and behavior and help them gain knowledge of a domain. So as we said earlier, the majority of these creators are not domain experts. Instead, they are themselves enthusiastic learner of domain, driven by their own desire to learning and share their learning outcome with the public. The creators get sufficient, significant intellectual satisfaction in doing so, even if they already have decent amount of knowledge in the domain. For example, C17, who has a master's degree in physics, makes videos for himself to understand concepts in physics, and also to actually answer his own questions. C26 has a PhD degree in quantum physics. She makes two kinds of videos, videos that explain things she already know, like tutorial videos, and videos that about something that she just recently learned. She reported that making a video that reflects her recent learning process is much more energizing. The creators also seek to impact viewers' well-being and behavior. For example, C19 mentioned that 
the goal is to not give knowledge to the viewers and they, so that they can use immediately, but rather the creator hope they, the viewers can apply the learned knowledge to various aspects in their life in a more abstracted way. C27 focused on influencing, the viewer, uh, influencing viewers' attitude and behavior because she believes knowledge doesn't really have a huge impact on who, how people think or act. Some creators do want to help viewers gain knowledge in the domain. C16, for example, used tools such as uh, TubeBuddy to research trendy topics and then make videos on these topics. This can be beneficial for their creators because videos that respond to existing demands can often attract more views. Creators uh, with channels uh, whose channel has become very popular still create videos about niche topics or those that can provide significant benefits for a smaller audience, even if doing so results in poorer YouTube metrics, above metric performance, and that's lower revenue. Our research also uncovers strategies creators use to improve the impact and reach of the SKC videos. According to Google's own report, the top two reasons people watch YouTube are to relax and to feel entertained, which means a viewer's YouTube homepage is likely to have many entertainment videos, gaming videos, and music videos. This is very challenging for SKC videos because they are competing with all the other attention-grabbing videos. Therefore, it is important for an SKC video to have a good thumbnail and title to attract viewers. So for these two SKC videos on the right, which one would you click? So in our research, we uncovered two storytelling strategies to spark and sustain viewers' curiosity. The inquiry-oriented structure is commonly seen in videos of the domains such as science and engineering. They often started with a question that is gripping enough and then form a narrative throughout the video with inquiry and explanation. The viewers will get rewarded by the review process and the answers to the question serve as an aha moment to the viewers. The commentary oriented structure is often seen in videos of the domains such as politics, history, and culture. Creators often use other popular cultural elements such as films, TV shows, and games, or books to form the narrative and piggyback some contents that they would like to explain. Before you make a video, it is important to know who your target audience is. And one may assume that targeting an audience with no background knowledge or interest with a domain can lead to accessible content that can reach many viewers. The creators we interviewed, however, find that videos produced in this fashion often do not attract more views. For example, these three try to make videos for people who are completely neophytes to science and find that wasn't a really successful strategy because the people who were totally neophytes didn't want to watch a video about science. And he hypothesized that he was trying to reach an audience that didn't want to be reached or maybe didn't even exist. However, when he makes videos that engage science enthusiasts, they often reach a bigger audience. And it ended up reaching more people who are neophytes than if you targeted them specifically. This strategy conforms with how YouTube recommends content to its viewers. When a new video is published, it is first shown to the subscribers of the channel who are enthusiasts of the domain and part of the initial audience. Therefore, it needs to perform well in terms of view metrics to be recommended to a broader audience. If the video content is not intellectually engaging, it may not breaking out uh, the circle of the creator subscribers. On the other hand, the concepts in the video must be explained in a high level and accessible way such that the content can be appreciated beyond the enthusiasts when they are recommended for a broader audience. Creators find satisfaction in meeting the different intellectual needs from the enthusiasts and the people without much knowledge in the domain. C17 creates videos that are both accessible to third graders and experts in the subject. Creators also commented on different vibes the SKC videos have than science documentary and TV shows. As C3 pointed out, the shaky footage and things that are out of focus 
means that they were there, they were in the show, and they are the viewers are not separated from the view creators either by space or by status or anything like that. It's about having a casual and a collegial conversation. Our interviews with the viewers show that the viewers find SKC videos highly educational and engaging, and they can watch the technical details in these videos for enjoyment. They also watch these videos under a variety of contexts. For example, V10 gives full attention to these videos, whereas V6 and V8 are often doing other activities, such as doing house chores or playing video games. This is because SKC videos have a low floor for the attention needed to understand the content, but a high ceiling for the educational and their entertainment rewards. As a result, the viewers can obtain their desired mix of intellectual satisfaction and entertainment with the amount of attention they devote in different contexts. This is consistent with the creator's expectation. As Three Blue and One Brown noted in the description of the channel, Three Blue, One Brown is some combination of math and entertainment, depending on your disposition. Our research also uncovered challenges for inclusive SKC. And we find that the creators and viewers of SKC videos are heavily male dominant, even though the YouTube platform isn't. SKC channels with millions and tens of millions of subscribers constantly observe 95% and above male viewership for their videos. And the creators proposed several reasons that they believe that contribute to the male dominant creatorship and viewership. For example, Earlier, uh, early science communicators were mostly male, and that channels that have a male host have a higher percentage of male viewership, that female creators receive vastly more harassment than male creators, and video editing has historically been a boys club, and that other male dominant platforms, such as Reddit, are a driver of audience for SKC videos on YouTube and or YouTube's recommendation algorithm may amplify small signals. Or perhaps as C13 summarized that it may be the continuation of all the friction already found in our society. Our papers also covers other interesting findings, but here are the main takeaways. SKC creators are neither domain experts nor professional information disseminators, but rather enthusiastic learners motivated by their intrinsic desire to learn and share. Effective SKC videos have a low floor due to the attention needed to understand the content, yet a high ceiling due to the education and entertainment value they can provide. As a result, the viewers can obtain their desired mix of intellectual satisfaction and entertainment based on the amount of attention they can devote. We also uncovered concerning female viewership trends for SKC videos on YouTube, ranging from as low as 1% to as high as only 20% for channels with millions of subscribers and tens of millions and even billions of views. Thank you for your attention.